welcome to another beautiful day in paradise. And let's face it, it's always a beautiful day in paradise. Today, though, in Antigua and Barbuda, we're going to look beyond the sun and the sea and the boats and the sand and look at some of the incredible artists that live in Antigua and Barbuda. Amazing art, ranging from cartoons to portraits to really works of art. So we're going to go down to Catherine's on the Beach to look at some of the work and talk to some of the artists. I'm Zoe Carlton and I'm a dreamer in paradise. Come with me to Catherine's Cafe by the Beach. Hi Jeff. Hello. Uh, Catherine's for me is the perfect location for this art. It's um, instead of that somber background you often see in art galleries, it's got the background of the sea, the background of the sand, and I feel like those sands. Paintings are absolutely glowing. So what made you decide to host the art exhibition? Well, Rochelle approached us probably about a month and a half, two months ago, um, with this marvelous idea that she wanted to create a space, well, a week essentially, for local artists to display their work. And uh, she felt that Catherine's was a great venue for this. So we did a lot of back and forth, a lot of chatting about the different events that we'll be hosting. And, uh, you know, we just couldn't really give up that opportunity, you know, Give the, give the artists a space to show their masterpieces, and I think it flows quite well. It's very open, airy space, the lighting's beautiful, the ambience is beautiful, so I think, you know, it's a sort of perfect harmony in some sense. You quite have quite a lot of um, live music as well here, don't you? Yes, yes we do. So we have a live band every Saturday, um, and we do a rotation of some amazing um, bands on island. Uh, we have 1761, we have Irie Fire, and this season we'll also have uh, uh, the return of uh, GP, Master Auto, oh, I think. Cool. Yes. Um, and then on Wednesday evenings, we have our jazz, which is also amazing. And we've also done an event this week with our friends who in Barbuda, where guests can come and enjoy the jazz and, and dinner as well. Um, we will have the artists displaying their work in the venue for the entire week. So even if guests book a lunch, they can come down, the artists will be here and they can speak a little bit about their work, you know, in the hopes that people love it so much they buy it. So that's what we're hoping for. It's a beautiful artwork. There's oh. so much talent in Antigua and Barbuda that so often goes unrecognized oh, and unnoticed. So, a uh, big shout out to Catherine's Cafe oh. for, for displaying this art. No, honestly, it's a, it's about the artist tonight, and I'm happy that we could we could be a space for um, everyone to display this incredible art. So, this inspired you to do more. <laughs> I think we should. I think I think the venue works for things like this. So, hopefully, we will. We never know if it's success. I'm sure we will. Rochelle, you are the interim behind all this exhibition, you've been running around, talking about getting the artists. You are a huge advocate for art in Antigua and Barbuda. What's the aim of this exhibition here at Catherine's Cafe? Thank you. Thank you for coming. It's to bring Antiguan artists together in um, a natural environment where the art shines, to invite people in to have good food, see good art. For artists to integrate with uh, people at their tables and chat to them at lunchtime and evenings, but predominantly to show off their art, which is prolific on the island and it needs to reach a bigger audience, so that's what it's about. Well, I couldn't agree more with that. I'm noticing that as the sun is going down, the paintings are coming even more to life. Yeah. Uh, this uh, Catherine's Cafe on Pigeon Beach couldn't be a better venue. Absolutely, and I think. One of the things is I often go to museums and I see art on a white wall. And to me, I find that too stark. But here it's natural. You've got the natural decking. You've got the natural sand, the natural chairs. You've got the sun going down, the lights coming up. It's just a very calming, natural, neutral environment. And I think that enables the art to sing for itself. It doesn't need a white wall. It just needs a little light and it speaks for itself. No, it's not. My art is neatly put away, um, where it will remain for the meantime until I have the confidence to uh, do anything about it. Now, but, this exhibition is here all week. Yes. Uh, this is the first of its kind, isn't it? Um, we've had um, 
I've had it. I've, I've run other exhibitions in other countries and done things like that. The first one I've done here in Antigua. Um, it's here all week. Um, the artist here is Kirsten, and this is a contrast between portraits here and the ship there. But what are we talking about that from here? Yes. Your artwork, your work, very interesting. It's very different. I know, it's, uh, I'm not set on a certain genre. What, whatever inspires me, I am actually all over the place. <laughs> Well, it's it's it's, well. it's it's underwater. It's above water. It's um it's profiles. It's um yeah. I as I said, I'm not set on a certain genre. I paint what I feel like painting, and as you probably remember, it was inspired by by a fall which I had during COVID and cracked my skull, and then after that everything just went haywire. Are you fully recovered? I fully recovered. I still haven't recovered from, from doing this stuff. <laughs> okay. Well, I I fell in love with them. <laughs> I can see why. They're really beautiful. <laughs> so are they, are they inspired by real people? Or? Um, yeah. I, yeah. Kind of it. Yeah. So, so I painted them first. In, in, I'm into details. I yeah, like I details. So, yeah. And, and I painted them, but I still wasn't quite happy then. And, and, you know, I, I saw some other art out there. This, this is what inspires me. I Google a lot and stuff. And, and that inspired me to cut a sponge to a certain profile. And then I went wild on it. <laughs> is, is that, meant to convey some sort of veiled look? Yeah, this is kind of um, uh, bringing out a little bit of mystic, yep. right? I, I love this lady to be mystic. I love mystic ladies, so to speak. Fair enough, fair enough. <laughs> I wear a veil. <laughs> I mean, just... what, I, what I kept, though, is the eyes and the lips, because I thought they stand out, you know? I mean, so, this one positively glows. Yes. I mean, you can see, yes. Even in the film I'm taking, it obviously is an aspect to show it. It's really yes. beautiful. It glows, light. yes. yes. Beautiful. I actually did her first. She is beautiful. Does she have a name? Um, no. 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 <laughs> <laughs> and this one is a little bit more, more somber, isn't it? Yeah, a little bit more somber. She probably has some sort of history. <laughs> it's I don't know what to say. It 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 just came out of me. I, you know, I I, I never I never have much reason why and how. It just that's what art is about. Yeah, well, yeah. So I guess some some artists can explain it. I can't. <laughs> but then we get onto one that is so different. From yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I know. A very detailed, very precise. Yes. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. Italian. Well, well, I live on top of the hill and um, looking down into Falmouth Harbour, and um, there was this Yankee clipper out there, and I said, "Oh wow, um, that would be something different for me to paint." And then I went to town on it. Um, again, the details. It took me uh, quite a while, you know. Um, getting the ocean right and all of that. Remember, I just paint for two and a half years, which, yeah. You know, pretty impressive. You're just showing off. Like no, I'm not showing off. All I'm telling you is that I sometimes think I fail and then I do it over, you know, kind of. Yeah. Well, this one, you can see this cleansing scene. Have you done more ships? Or is this no, one? yeah, I've done, I, no, no, I've done another clipper, like an older version, which I sold. And I did another ship and I sold that too. Ships seem to be in demand. <laughs> yes, people love them, especially when they look like that. Yeah. So what are you working on at the moment? At the moment, I have a little lull time because I am so busy at the moment with all kinds of things. You remember, I'm, I'm the film commissioner and I'm, I'm, I'm bringing now a, a Bollywood movie to Antigua, which, right, yeah, no it's going to be a big production. And um, so I'm kind of kind of tied down with all kinds of things, right? And then I have my restaurant on top of it. So, 
It has sometimes I'm I'm not sure how I do it, but I do it. And what do you do in your spare time? My spare time, I sleep. <laughs> there is no <laughs> I sleep, so I can, you know, I have a little uh, energy when I when I wake up. <laughs> but thank you so much. The EP Venom. These are dramatic pieces of art. Wow. Thank you. This guy here, he's clearly in trouble, clearly in pain. Tell me, what's he about? Well, essentially, that piece is done to represent my struggles as an artist. Um, the paint is done in such a way to represent scarring or whatever, whatnot, and he's essentially washing away his pain. So you can clearly see he's in the water. And uh, I know we've had this lesson before, but he's actually wearing a mask. Is that right? Yes, yes, he is. Um, I did that based on the concept of when you meet someone for the first time, the first impression matters. But essentially, that's not you. So, similar concept. The mask is to represent his base feelings, what he has on the outside, but you don't really know what he's feeling on the inside, what's underneath the mask. And what's the title of this one? Endurance. So what medium do you use for this? Um, Water-based paint on canvas. Very dramatic one. And so Thank this you. represents your tribulations as an artist, and this one is more of, of some of the struggles you've found, isn't it? This one is called Tribulations. Yes, yes it is. So what is this one? It's very different. That one's very stylized. This one is much more flowing. Yeah. So what is this one actually saying to you? Well, this one is a similar concept, um, Troubles of an Artist, but in this one I wanted to have a more fluid expression as though he's dredging through something and he's pushing through something and he's just expressing himself essentially. So you have had struggles with an artist, clearly. Yes, yes I have. So are you happy in your art now? Are you more comfortable with it or still tribulations? Still tribulations. Um, I am a bit more comfortable but I want to get better at it. So I keep trying my best. Oh, being an artist in some way, like, yeah, 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 definitely. It's definitely not a kick walk. Yeah. And you have to work a normal job as well to keep the art going. But currently, I'm doing it full time. You are? Well, yeah. That, that is really good news. That is really good news. It's really good A job to keep up with the art. Yeah, but the same thing is, everyone's different. Um, For me personally, I don't do well with that type of stuff. I, I, tend to work better when I'm focused on one thing. If that isn't the case, I tend to have a lot of troubles. So that is why I decided to just do art full time. And they really are very dramatic. They're very amazing, actually. Thank so you. what about this one? Now, this one is completely different. This, yeah, this to one. To me, looks like a sad lady. And is that what it's about? Well, that wasn't the intention when painting it. But if it came out that way, um, I think... Offensive, perhaps, rather than sad. Yeah, um, the name of this one is called Nebula. Yeah. Uh, there isn't really a backstory to this one. I had a image in my mind of like a sort of um, paladin-like figure yeah. with the, you know, the from the Holy Mary type of pose, essentially. Yeah, that's essentially. You can right. see that link with the Virgin Mary. Though. Yeah, and I just wanted, I just wondered what that would look like if I was to combine this with a bit of abstract. You know, so semi-realism, abstract type of thing. So does a lot of your work come from the park? Brown, good evening to you. Good evening, Zori. Nice to see you again. It's nice to see you again. I am so glad you were here because I remember your painting, Woman of the Soil, yes. which won a competition. It was one of those paintings that, to me, just glowed with beauty. It was incredible. Thank and you. I will post a picture of that one as well with this Thank you. Thank you. But this one, when I saw it, it made me think of you. <laughs> and I was really hoping this would be you because this, as well, has that glow, has that realism, has that. Oh, you can tell he's wearing satin on his head. Yes, yes. That's yes. just incredible. So tell me a little bit about this painting, please. Well, Blunt, which is what it's called, um, it's my most recent painting. Uh, it was influenced by a lot of the experiences I had because I just re returned from France. I was exhibiting um, in Saint Malo uh, for the, the Rome. Uh, festival there and so as I got back and wanted to create a piece of work for this exhibition Blunt came about and if you know my work um, I deal with things like identity and 
um, gender and sexuality and masculinity, which I um, incidentally this is about, and I often juxtapose hard and soft. So it's the delicacy of the fabrics on his head against the roughness of his face, but against the strong gaze of his eyes, against the flowers in the background. Um, even with the the mixing of colors, which is something that is fairly new to me. I'm getting more and more into color. Um, my palettes are always usually very limited. And so um, I decided to juxtapose that, that idea of hard and soft. And it's not only just the, the male against something that is softer, it's that idea of challenging the stereotypes that we in the Caribbean as men have always had to struggle with in terms of what constitutes a man and what is masculinity. And so I challenge a lot of that by juxtaposing things like flowers, which are not traditionally associated with men. And so it's that whole idea of um, the play on the flowers against the strong face, against the harsh gaze, against the, the blood that is in his, his mouth and the smoking. Um, so it's all of that. And of course, there's this idea of which is evident throughout all of my pieces. Um, it has become uh, one of my one of the things that defines my work now. It's a halo, the gold yes. halo. I was going to and, ask about that. Yeah, and that that is the, um, that is that is about um, the divinity of man. I believe human beings are divine because we have human um, we have freedom of choice. Yep. And so all of my paintings usually have that, even though sometimes the halo itself is not um, fully rounded. Sometimes it's distressed. Sometimes it's broken up and Sometimes it's, it's fairly simple, as in this one, other times it's very decorative, um, and so that is where that came from. It's a very powerful painting. Thank you. Thank you. Mark, I hope you'll join me again and we can have a more detailed yes, discussion about yes, your art on this yes, channel. Yes, yes. Mark, sure. thank you so much for talking. Thank you as always, Zoe. My pleasure. Neil your paintings are full of drama. They're absolutely amazing. Thank you. Tell me a little bit about, about this one, Lady of the Sea. Okay, all right. So uh, this piece is, is simply called Protector, and it was inspired by a friend of mine who actually is a fashion designer. Uh, his name is Kevin Moint, and he uh, had created a, an evening gown for a carnival costume. Not a carnival costume, evening gown for a carnival. And it was um, based on this kind of goddess that he had created who protects the sea from people who, you know, mistreat it and dump in it and pollute it and that kind of thing. And so I was really inspired by what he had created. And then I came along and did a painting that was based on that. And the idea is sort of this warrior goddess-like woman who's rising out of the water to, you know, deal justice to those who might be messing around with the sea and dumping things in it and, and messing up our environment, that kind of thing. So I, I really wanted it to feel dramatic because, you know, the, the concern, it, what we have, how we feel about it is very, it's, it's a dramatic kind of thing. So. I, I find it very, very dramatic and very yes. beautiful, but also a little bit scary. I find the mask, which, as you said earlier on, is like driftwood. Sort of like driftwood, right. I find that quite scary. Mm -hmm. I wonder why. I don't know. I, I don't jump, I promise. <laughs> Good, that's good. Um, so it was that, um, the, the, the driftwood, but then also this sort of, um, you know, it's kind of like the sea fan um, a thing, oh gosh, like, it, it always washes up on the shore after it's died, sadly, but it has this very nice, very netty kind of pattern to it. So it's very hardy, this material that you find that washes up on shore. So I'd use that um, as inspiration for her armor, like, you know, to, that she uses things from the sea that have sort of died, but she uses them to arm herself with them and, you know, deal out her justice. I find myself uh, keen to look at the fashion that inspired this one. <laughs> I'll try to get it to you. It, it, really doesn't, it doesn't look anything like it. I, I won't lie to you. But um, it was just in the notion of this of this deity who who is a protector that I really was fascinated by. Is the environment something that inspires you a lot in your work? Because uh, this one over here... It kind of is yeah. because um, I have my sister, she's the uh, um, director of the Environmental Awareness Group, Arika Hill. Arika Hill! Yeah, I know Arika so, very well. Yeah, so I get a lot of it. <laughs> I get a lot of the concerns on yeah, a regular basis. So I think it, it kind of comes out in the work at some points. 
So sometimes I, I try to use more sustainable materials, like I just go outside and find some tree bark that is falling down or some yeah. coconut bowl, that kind of thing. So we try to be a little more conscious with the work. I, I try to be conscious yeah, with the work. She's one of my favorite people. Thank you. Yeah, she's one of my favorite people too, yeah. <laughs> just I generally. <laughs> And this one gives a feeling as well of the environment of the world. Well, right. Tell me about this one. Am I right about that? Uh, this one, I really, uh, it was actually a series of these goddesses. I do like mystical. I do like the mystical and, they, and the unseen um, kind of thing. So um, this one is actually the third one. This is goddess number three. Um, I had done two others before, and they actually were all part of one large canvas. I got this huge piece of canvas, and I had done all kinds of splashes of color and so on, and I just kind of just cut it up in part parted it in and used different peep, different images on the different canvases. So that was the idea with it. Was it environmentally um, concerned? I'm not sure. It was such a long time ago. It was in 2017. I don't always remember what it was about. But um, maybe. If that's what it means to you, then great. You know? Well, it could be that. I think it does. Perhaps just, just mm -hmm. subconsciously invade your work. I mean, look, these got these beautiful, beautiful doves. Right, yeah. So, you know, quite possibly. Yeah, and I also kind of wanted to. It was actually based on a, a, a photograph I taken of a friend of mine, yeah. and she she was just sitting there. We were at a, we were all at a practice because I, I sing as well as so this group of people that I sing with, and she was just kind of sitting there. And I was like, oh, don't move, you know. I just ran into her picture, and then I uh, then put it into this painting. So you know, it, it could be anything. It could be anything. It could be anything. I want to know what she's thinking. Uh, in my head, what she was thinking, um, I don't remember. It was so long ago. Oh my God! It was, it was so long ago. I can't remember. It was supposed to be something deep and profound. I hope it was. I hope that it was. At, at the practice, it probably was because we were really trying to figure out, you know, how we were going to get through this song and how we were going to figure out the parts and who was doing what and all of that. So, you know, maybe she is contemplating the fate of the world. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe that's what's happening here. Let's go with that. Let's go with that. Okay, so this one was um, really anything I could find. I am a, I'm also, I, I teach visual arts, and so I'm, I really enjoy using all kinds of materials I can get my hands on. So there's a lot of textile ink, and there's some gold leaf, there's paint. Uh, I use marker for the hair, and this area here as well. So it's just, and there's some spray paint as well. It's just whatever I could just throw at the canvas that I just threw at it. You spend a lot of time painting, you say, you're um, a design teacher? Yes, I do teach. I, yeah, I teach at two places, actually. But um, I try to spend a lot of time painting. I haven't gotten the chance to do it as much as I'd like to recently. Um, but I, it, it's, it's my, my favorite thing. Well, <laughs> it's I my, can see that. It's my favorite thing, so I do try to do it as much as possible. I actually just finished this huge painting. It's probably uh, it's about eight feet wide, so it's about from here. There's one column to the other. Right, so I just finished that for a client What's the other day. Ah, again, it's another goddess. <laughs> it's another, um, but um, the idea for that one was, uh, he said that what he really liked, he loves peacocks. And so I was kind of incorporating uh, the peacock and this flower called the peacock flower, which is the pride of Barbados. Um, the, the, the client is actually Bajan himself. And so I was, it's a whole mishmash of things. It's, all over the place, and that's just, that's kind of how I like it, you know. Yeah. So yeah, that's well, what it was about. Thank you so much. No Say problem. Hi to Erika. Hey, Erika. Oh, yeah. <laughs>